Coming up on this edition of the EV Revolution Show, we're going to look at Ford's F-150 pickup truck, a little bit of news there. Tesla's cranking out uh, Model 3s, are almost there in China, and talk about a whole bunch of other news coming up. Stay tuned. Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 68. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. I'm laughing because I just spent 10 minutes trying to do the show and I forgot to press the record button. So, you know, when you get old folks, things like that happen. But I'm, I got it straightened out now. So thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules to watch the show. Let me get into some of the stories I'm looking at for this week. First quick story is that it seems that uh, Tesla Model 3 is ramping up in China. Um, at the Shanghai plant, the Tesla Gigafactory 3 plant, there's here's some pictures of some first production-ready China-made Model 3 sedans, even with the Chinese badging on them. So it seems like they're starting to uh, crank these things out, which is great, at least in in a small quantity. Um, I you know I predict that it'll do very well in China. There's no doubt about that. Uh, uh, Tesla is also looking to deploy a service program and a support mechanism for these vehicles, of course, uh, throughout and a supercharging environment as well within China. So all these are going hand in hand. Um, now these vehicles that you're seeing here are part of an initial trial basis because Tesla is still waiting for government approvals uh, as well as official licensing to move forward with full series production. Good for them. Uh, I suspect again that this uh, Model 3 will do really well in China and uh, we'll have to wait a couple of quarters or so and see what the numbers are. But congratulations Tesla on uh, moving another milestone. And staying with Tesla, uh, since uh, Elon tweeted a little while ago that the Tesla pickup truck is going to be revealed on November 21st in Los Angeles and uh, the internet went nuts with renderings and all this kind of crazy stuff you know I take that stuff with a grain of salt and that's why I don't really kind of publish and talk a lot about renderings and what people think it might be I always like to deal with facts so some of the pictures you're seeing here are pretty weird you got spaceship you got military type vehicles all that kind of stuff. So we don't know what it's going to look like. We do know from some information that Elon has provided that it will be a target price of under 50k, at least as an entry level base pricing. Uh, that because he's trying to make this more affordable. Um, it should boast a range between 400 and 500 miles, maybe even more, depending on what kind of battery packs they put in this. You can do the conversion to metric. It should be all wheel drive with a motor on each axle. It'll have a dynamically adjustable suspension for loads and all the kind of all the kind of standard stuff that you would expect pickup trucks especially pickup trucks that are designed to replace pickup trucks that are being used by working people that are being awards by uh, tradesmen and professionals and all these kind of people that use their trucks on a daily basis for their living for their jobs um, or in fleets that are used on construction sites or other commercial elements um, these are going to be great uh, uh, replacements for that as far as what it looks like, the sky's the limit. You could send me a rendering and it could even look like that. Who the heck knows? But uh, keep your eyes out and uh, watch the November 21st reveal to get all the information. Now, this has been a pivotal week for uh, Volkswagen because they've actually started production of their first ID3 fully electric vehicle in the Zwickau, German, Germany plant. And that's a momentous occasion because, you know, you folks know I've been talking about Volkswagen now for the last three years or so. And... Uh, they've been doing a lot of hype. They've been doing a lot of you know, advertising, a lot of making a lot of statements, putting we're saying we're putting money, all this kind of stuff. Well, this is now where the rubber literally hits the road. Their first ID3 is rolled off the production line. Chancellor, German Chancellor Angela Merkel was there for the celebration, dignitaries and all this kind of stuff. It's a big deal for Volkswagen because this is a paradigm shift for their organization. They are saying this is the way they want to go to the future is electrified. It's going to take a long time for them to fully get there uh, globally, but they are they are committed to moving there. And this is the first step. You heard it here. You saw it here in the show. You read it in the papers. Remember this time frame. It's a pretty important uh, in the histo history of VW and EVs to a degree that this has happened. Uh, it's a white ID3, that one of the first vehicles that rolled off the line. 
Um, this is an outstanding manufacturing facility that will maintain the quality of that VW is known for. You know, uh, if some people just listen to the latest podcast that I did with Andrew that I talked about from the last show, I said that my first pick actually for an EV was uh, since I I couldn't afford the Model Three at the time was going was an Elf. I just couldn't get one. There was a long waiting list, and there was no way I was going to get one before the incentives went away. And the reason was not range because it did not does not have the the best range out of some of the other similar price vehicles but it was that driving characteristics of the e-golf and the quality quality of the workmanship of the the vehicle itself and the interior uh just fabulous you know really nice features and comfort so uh that is being maintained uh, in the id3 platform through the through german manufacturing process and they're all uh, doing that and keeping the price comparable with internal combustion vehicles and that's music to my ears that's what i love to hear is that volkswagen is committed to bringing these prices down so that you one less barrier of adoption is cost parity that you know you don't want to have to pay a whole lot more for an all-electric vehicle that's where we need to get to it's also going to be produced in what Volkswagen calls a balance sheet CO2 neutral way. So much more green elements in the manufacturing process, less carbon footprints, all that kind of stuff. So that these vehicles, even in their early production now, are going to be, they're not saying carbon, they're not saying zero carbon. They're saying a neutral way. So probably as close to carbon neutral as they can get in that process. And that's important when you look at uh, well to wheel and wheel to well uh, significance of the electrification of automobiles. Some pundits argue that it's more it's carbon more costly on a carbon perspective, uh, electric vehicles and, and internal combustion vehicles. But when you look at the savings in the lifetime of the vehicle from a zero emission and factor in recycling uh, after post um, recycling elements of electric vehicle batteries and, and components there and lower carbon footprint manufacturing processes and even sourcing of materials, it's it really makes a stronger argument for all electric vehicles. Um, so again, this Wickow plant is the first plant as well for VW that's that's uh, completely switching over to e-mobility, which is uh, an investment that based on 1.2 billion euros that VW is throwing in and continuing to throw into this plant. Again, you know, I the VW came out with lots of announcements about spending money and putting money here. Now we're seeing the fruits of that spending and the labor. Um, so that's good. And this plant actually, once it gets fully up and running by the end of 2021, will produce six MEB model lines uh, from three different uh, VW Group brands uh, with a production quality of, they want to spin up to, uh, in the next two years, to 330,000 vehicles per year. All and These are all electric vehicles. So great on VW. This is fantastic news. I'm really excited about this. When I saw this and read all of that, things are finally coming together for them. So keep following them. And uh, if anybody's got an ID3 in order and they want to share information on your process so far, please do let me know. Now, staying with VW quickly, they've uh, sent me a press release about something they're going to announce in uh, the LA uh, Auto Show uh, on November 19th, so coming up in a short time, something called uh, their next version of their ID called the Space Vision Concept. It's kind of a cross between a really nice uh, low drag coefficient vehicle and an SUV. So how the heck they're going to get there, we'll have to wait and see. Something uh, about uh, 300 mile potential range on this thing. It'll be the seventh member of the ID family of concepts that we've seen so far. Um, that's about all. It's a very loose and just kind of, you know, in your face announcement. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what comes out there. But again, another step that uh, VW is continuing to come out and work on more concept vehicles that are all battery electric and that meet their electrification plans. Now, I talked about, I mentioned Ford F-150 in the preamble there. What's come out of uh, uh, some exciting news that came out of the Ford F-150 electric version is through actually a different source. The uh, UAW in the U.S. is working on some uh, working with the various U.S. manufacturers on renegotiating union contracts. There was almost a strike with GM with workers and Ford, of course, saw that and wanted to say, hey, let's just get in there. Let's get our contracts done and avert any striking because we're moving forward. And what came out of that information was from deals uh, and some information that Ford provided to the union 
opinion about the investments that they're going to make to secure these jobs uh, and where jobs are going to be created as well. So there's $6 billion of investments that Ford is doing to create 8,500 new jobs in the U.S. Um, and some of those investments are going to be included into the Dearborn plant in Michigan. About 100, uh, sorry, 700 million will go to Dearborn and they will be, uh, they have, have been targeted to produce the F-150 BEV, battery electric vehicle. So it's now on paper, then that's the official plan that Ford wants to do, and also a hybrid version of that truck. Don't know if that's a plug-in hybrid or a regular hybrid or both, don't know yet, but hopefully it's a plug-in hybrid. So good to see that Ford is committing on the uh, F-150 battery electric uh, only vehicle. A model of that because it is their best-selling vehicle globally and it's the best-selling pickup truck globally as well so uh, i'm glad that ford is committed to that they've also talked about louisville that they'll have a plug-in hybrid versions of the escape and corsair being built out of those plants with an investment of 100 million dollars going there and with a 400 million dollar investment going to kansas city to produce a totally new transit uh, battery electric vehicle or bev version of the ford transit so that's great um nothing more about the mustang expire inspired electric suv that's all the hype that should be coming out we should be seeing that soon some announcements on that soon um I, there's a source that says that this is called the mock e i don't know i haven't heard anything from ford so until you hear something from them until it gets released just discount everything that you hear it's all speculation and wild guess and there's a tons of renderings on that thing floating around too so anyway if you like renderings go check it out but i'm glad to see that ford is putting their money where they say they want to go because they've been pretty light on actually taking doing actions they've been saying things but not really doing much here they're actually putting stuff on paper to lock in contracts and, and with the uaw to avert strikes and to move forward with their business plans going to jump quickly across the pond and talk about a couple of manufacturers peugeot is also launching an electric version of a similar transit type of vehicle their expert transporter vehicle which they call um, they're launching a full electric version of it which will be available in the second half of 2020 it means now that all light commercial vehicles coming out of peugeot will also have purely electric versions and that's good that'll give more choice to consumers these are based on the psa group's um, emp2 platform comes in two different battery sizes is 50 and 75 kilowatt hour which gives a wltp ranges of about two to three hundred kilometers respectively again epa will be a little less that's that's fine for most daily use applications again these are vehicles that are used by tradesmen by um, uh, uh, organiz commercial organizations for deliveries or or whatever um, within their their means that don't necessarily need a ton of range because they're going around urban areas doing work and things like that no other information as far as load volumes or payload capacities, but I suspect that these will be empty and you'll be able to customize these to a degree if you want shelving units, if you want cage built, if you want uh, cabinets and all this kind of stuff, if you're you know, working with tools and you need to store all that, whatever. These, I, I'm sure there'll be some customizable options, but uh, good to see Peugeot kind of following on Ford what they're doing there and adding more electrification to their work type vehicles. And BMW grew up in Europe. Um, there's an article that came out that I'm going to be very careful on what how I say this. They revealed that the Mini brand is already seeing strong interest in the first production of the all-electric uh, Mini Cooper SE or the Mini Electric vehicle. They're saying that they've got over 78,000 people that are customers that have expressed a keen interest. Quote quotes um, of that compared to about 45,000 back in August that had that had expressed a same keen interest. Now these don't mean that their orders or reservations i want to be clear on that um they, they they're not saying that they are but they're really not saying um they don't 100 deny that they are aren't either so it's a little bit of confusing uh, confusion there but even if they convert that interest to 50 percent, that would be you know for 35 40 45 thousand let's say depending on how these things climb of actual orders for this vehicle maybe 50 thousand which would be pretty significant since the bmw brand totally only sells about 300 thousand to 350 thousand cars annually so this would be a big chunk if it uh, for its first year run if it does allude to that now i think i'm on record either on my show or certainly on twitter of saying that i think that they're, they're going to get be able to get a hundred thousand of these out the door in their first full year of production because i think there's that much demand for it we'll wait and see uh, i hope it is and that production is starting at the uh, later part of this month in november so let's wish bmw uh, the group the best for the mini e and uh, keep your eyes uh, watching for more stats we'll probably start seeing some numbers in the next quarter to come from them
Now, staying in Europe, this is a little bit of an offbeat story. As you folks know, I like to bring other elements of electrification into the show, not just cars once in a while. And here's another one about Stuttgart Airport. I've been through there. It's a lovely airport. Very nice. They are now expanding their electric cargo tractor fleet. Uh, they have purchased a bunch of uh, these vehicles, electric um, cargo vehicles called the Sherpa E's and there's some video running here you can see what that's all about these are actually used to operate luggage and cargo uh, pulling all that stuff around the airport around the tarmac there uh, the apron as they call it excuse me I gotta get my terminology right and these are replacing uh, diesel vehicles that are previously used I love to hear that that's always music to my ears getting rid of a tailpipe right with electric even if it's a it's a weird kind of vehicle um, now they they are actually uh, on track they very energy conscious and environmentally minded in Stuttgart as much as they can be at the airport they started using zero emission battery op technology already to handle passenger and baggage movements on the apron and now they're doing the same in the cargo sector as well by replacing these diesels with emission-free vehicles so uh, and again you know when you look at it from a commercial perspective here's a great use case they they cite their reasons and not just being because they want to look good and be environmentally friendly folks it's always the bottom line if a company can save money and be environmentally friendly then they'll do it and they say that the reasons for replacement are the operational and economic efficiency improvements associated with these vehicles so i'm glad to see this happening continue to look at other examples throughout the globe where electrification is changing things and my last story is just a little bit unique one. I picked this up. It's Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, their city council met over the last little while and, and declared and they voted to declare a climate emergency. Now, that's been in the news over the past week or so. There's this report that came out with uh, over 11,000 scientists globally saying we are in a climate emergency. I've had lots of discussions with people both offline, uh, not you know, both in person and online about Ah, uh, we don't really have a climate emergency. It's all bonk. It's all BS, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can believe what you want. I'm not here to convert you on that. I am a true believer that we are in a climate change situation. We do have to act fast. This isn't something we can sit back and just hope going to go away. So the city of Ann Council of Ann Arbor, Michigan, voted to unanimously declare a climate emergency. And in that, they're going to take some steps to uh, lay out a series of carbon reduction measures to take effect between now and 2030. So they're going to build this 10-year plan. Um, and it's to shift away from fossil fuels and, of course, and embrace clean, renewable energy in many different facets of the city and how they operate and what they operate and what they do. And, and a goal to becoming carbon neutral by the end of uh, 2020. The 2020s or in by 2030. Now they're also starting to have summits to solicit program ideas for carbon neutral uh, programs and things that they should be looking at. Uh, and, and that's why I think uh, I wanted to jump on this story for two reasons. One, it's also home of the EPA testing labs or emission labs. Hmm, that's kind of ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Guys that test for uh, mainly fuel efficiency on uh, ICE vehicles, but of course do test electric vehicles. So, and, and they've lost a lot of funding, unfortunately, because now that with uh, the USA pulling out of the Paris Agreement, that's a very sad state, folks, but I won't go down that path. Uh, you can make your own judgment on that. I think that that's a wrong move to do, the pulling out of the agreements. But what also caught my eye in this is that they're they're look, starting to consult and talk to various groups and people and the public about ways that they can lower their carbon footprint. And that's relevant because a lot of cities now are doing that. I just recently got invited to where I live here in the town of Calden. I'll be uh, attending a workshop at the end of this month. Uh, that's all about very similar uh, about reducing carbon footprints, ways to promote sustainable energy, ways to promote lower emissions, be it vehicles or other elements. And I'm going to be going in there to add my two cents and be part of a work group to help build out some plans. So I'm excited about that. But look, folks, if you're interested in getting involved, reach out to your local city council or regional council or whatever it may be that you have and ask them, what are they doing? Are they looking to, to make up to build a plan? Are they looking to take steps to lower carbon footprints, lower emissions, for municipality there are lots of things that municipalities can do each one is different in what they control and what they operate and there are many ways that they can look to do things i would reach out get involved you got some ideas get involved spearhead it talk to your local counselors i'm sure they would love to hear from you and i'm glad to see examples like ann arbor stepping up and moving forward 
All right, well, that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I think I've talked enough. Episode 68, thanks very much for tuning in to watch it. I'm trying to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. As always, I appreciate everybody watching from YouTube with likes and comments. Um, please click if you like to subscribe this. Um, I'm not going to talk about reaching my goal. I've already mentioned that. I thank for a lot of comments that I received after that last show about people trying to support me on that. Appreciate it a lot means a lot so thank you very much for watching also a big big humble thanks to my patreon supporters uh received a, another new supporter after last show thank you very much to, to that person who i reached out to to thank them appreciate that if you're interested check out patreon site you can also email me if you're interested in making a one-time donation for the show i can talk about paypal or something like that whatever um, everything helps me folks it helps to keep me going and uh, helps me to uh, look at some of the things i i have some grand plans of some things i want to do um, um, and uh, it's going to take a bit of funding to do that and some time. It's a bit of a balance act for me, but I do. I am putting more time to the show here as I'm not traveling as much anymore. So thank you very much for support there. Don't forget, um, Fully Charged Live. That's what I was trying to say. Austin, coming up February 1st, 2nd. Uh, here's the details. Use that coupon code to get 15% off the ticker price. If you're going, let me know because I'd love to hook up with you. Have a chat. As I mentioned in the last show, I'm, I want to meet as many people as possible and hear stories because that helps fuel what I can go out to talk to other people about, about real life situations, right? Not the FUD and not all the glamorous stuff that we look to see. Uh, also want to thank again, I mentioned on the last show about the Andrew McCready's podcast, Plugged In. If you haven't checked it out, go search it. It's called Plugged In by Andrew McCready. You gotta make sure you look for all that. Uh, the show that he put up last week, it went really, really well. I did most of the talking. <laughs> I said to Andrew, yeah, I did all the talking on the show. He goes, no, I wanted you to do all the talking. I said, okay. It came out really well. Thanks some really great information from that show. And I thank him very much humbly again for putting me on the podcast and some very, very kind words that he had for about me and about what I do here. Thank you very much, Andrew. That's much appreciated. Excited. Oh, one last thing. I am opening up locally for any local viewers in the GTA. I'm going to be starting a chapter of the Electric Vehicle Society in the early part of next year. Could be January, could be February. When I when I get that going, I'm just waiting on some dates and times. Um, but I got the official go-ahead to, to start that. So if, if you're in the Brampton, Mississauga, Caledon, Peel region area or somewhere around there, could be Orangeville, could be Bolton, um, you know, could be... Um, um, uh, Georgetown, Acton, those areas, uh, Shelburne, whatever. And if you're interested in helping me out to get this thing going, I'm certainly going to welcome as many people to come out to meetings as possible because we do want to build a community out of this so that we can go out and do education events and all that kind of stuff. And I'll be hosting monthly meetings here in South Caledon. Um, so if you're interested, uh, send me an email at the show email or uh, message me off of Twitter and I'll add you to my list. I've already got uh, somebody reached out to me that wants to help and I, I need a few more people to help build this foundation so if you're interested please let me know other than that thank you again very much for watching always always humbled by everybody's comments and uh, and suggestions and very very positive feedback thank you very much and everybody please stay safe uh, keep the faith and until next time i'll see you when i see you take care bye bye